Okay, so this is the second stage then of setting up the teeth. We're going to do the upper posterior uh, teeth now. And where did you get those from? How did you pick those? 28, what does that mean? Yeah, the numbers on here, the 28, they're 28 millimetres from the front of the uh, 4 to the distal of the 8. Uh, we tend not to have to worry about this really. We pick the upper anterior teeth and we have a big chart which tells us which teeth, which posterior teeth should match. So again, we're just wiping that sticky bit of wax off. Yeah, there. you don't. You really don't want wax on your teeth, um, as you'll see later on. It causes you all sorts of problems. Yeah, all the way through doing this process, you want to try and keep the thing, keep the whole lot as neat as possible. So I'm just carving a line there now. I wouldn't normally do this, but this is just to show you where I'm aiming to put the posterior teeth or the central fossa, the central fissure of the posterior teeth. And I'm trying to get it slightly buckled to the to the um, alveolar ridge. You've done it fairly straight as well. Yeah, they go, they go yeah. straight back down. Yeah. Now I know some people put big curves in, which is probably wrong. Yeah, well, you, well, they you, you can you can go for a curve yeah. if you want. It, it, if you take them too far out yeah. buckly, you tend to see them all the way down yeah. the uh, the buckle corridor, and it looks like you make everybody look like Julia Roberts. Yeah, wide mouth frogs. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> The other thing to note with these, we're not going to put any sevens on. It's sort of a Sheffield thing, really. Uh, the idea is that the sevens cause more problems because they're closer to the, the TMJ and there's a lot of force goes down there. And also that they're on the slope of the uh, alveolar ridge on, on the lower set of teeth, so you tend to um, displace the lower denture. So the four's in, it's tilted back a bit just at the... Uh, tip so I'm going to pull the neck back to straighten the whole thing up. And you're quite lucky that no trimming's been involved here, there's no fancy editing yeah, there, that one straight on you. Yeah. Plenty, a good vertical dimension yeah. to this denture, when people have lost the vertical dimension then you, you're going to be trimming away at those teeth and it takes you three times as long. So just looking to get the central fissure running straight yeah. straight down that and line. And cusps then. wise on here? You I've got both touching yeah. the occlusal plane on this four. And then as we move back, we'll try to uh, introduce the curve of Spain, curve of Monson, or the, the compensating curves. So we'll lift off the buccal cusps, we'll lift the buccal cusps off the occlusal plane. And likewise with the distal on the, uh, the six as well, we'll lift those off the occlusal plane. It's um, just noticing your technique here, because you're effectively destroying your measurement device, your registration room, you, you're only taking off as much wax as you really need to. Yeah, um, you want to keep... quite easy to get a bit enthusiastic with a knife and then lose all the relationship where you're going. Yeah, try and keep as much information as you can. Yeah. So Let's this see. is fairly straightforward again, yeah? Yeah. So, straight up, which he isn't. Just, yeah, just tidying that yeah. up a bit. You can see that I'm, I try to keep the wax work as neat as possible as we go along. Uh, the other thing is you're not melting too much wax at any time. Because uh, when you melt wax and it cools back again, it contracts. So it's very easy when the, the wax contracts to pull the teeth up, if you like, towards the ridge. So you end up with your teeth sort of pulling away. Yeah, it really is soul destroying when you've yeah. been working on these things for a couple of hours and you go and go and have your lunch and come back and the, all the occlusal contacts have disappeared because the wax has contracted. Yeah, little fiddle here and there. That's looking pretty good now. Taking the excess off. Keeping the teeth clean again. Final one then on this side. Upper right. six. With that five we had the buccal cusp just slightly off the occlusal plane. With uh, the six we're going to have just the uh, mesiopalatal cusp touching the occlusal plane. So the distal cusps will be slightly raised and the buckle cusp slightly raised. There he is. Okay, that one dropped in quite neatly. So just neatly. making sure the fissures all line up. There we are. And you are really quite lucky not to have to do a lot of trimming at this point. That's quite nice. Almost as if we planned it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Very nice. So, yep, so it's the buckle mesial cusp that you've got, and you can see in this shot here actually both. Um, Sorry, the platon mesial cusp, isn't it? Contacting yeah. both buccal cusps are clearly off of the lower block. Yeah, off the lower rim. Yeah. 
there we go. Yeah. Just a plate, of course, touching. So now we uh, just tidy up the wax around the teeth. So I'll just take a hot knife and just uh, secure the teeth in, really, make sure they're not going to move. And sort of prepare them ready for waxing up later because we need to contour the denture later on to give it its final shape. I've just turned it upside down there so it doesn't run over, all over the teeth. And then we'd simply turn the articulate around and do the uh, the three posterior teeth in this case on the on the other side. Around the anterior teeth at the same time. Just at this stage, it's just making sure they don't move, really. Yeah. Okay, and that's just about it. You'll see the others on in the next podcast. Okay, that's it. Job done. Excellent.